Hey, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Robin Graham show. Our conversation today is going to be fun because we're going to talk about fashion style and how that can influence the perception that other people have of you. Your personal brand is the foundation of your business. It's how people are going to understand that you're the one for them to hire, to work with. And it's going to open the doors for so many opportunities when you differentiate yourself. And even the clothes you wear can help distinguish you from everybody else in the marketplace, especially anyone that is in the same area of expertise or niche that you're in. And depending on what field you're in also, you know, fashion can kind of, your style can really kind of indicate the type of person you are, how dedicated you are, what type of achiever you are, and all of those things. So I'm really excited to have this conversation today with Angela Foster. And before we dive in, I want to tell you a funny story. So we are connected on LinkedIn and we have been connected on LinkedIn for a very long time, like as long as I can remember. And I don't know how we got connected or anything else, but she's just this beautiful light on LinkedIn. And I've always enjoyed her content. Well, someone, her PR agent pitched me for her to be on the show. And at first I was like, oh, we talk about personal branding all the time. We've already had people on to talk about style and fashion, which I'll link those episodes too. And then, and then it dawned on me. I'm like, wait a minute, that's Angela. That's Angela that I love on LinkedIn. I have to have her on the show. And so here we are today having this you know, long awaited conversation that we should have probably had a long time ago. But anyway, here we are. And without further ado, Angela Foster, welcome to the Robin Graham show. Oh my gosh, Robin, thank you so much. To your point, I have been so looking forward to having this conversation. And I have to tell you, yes, I feel like we have been connected on LinkedIn for ages. And I've been a fan of your podcast for ages. So I do have to say, this is one of those pinch me moments where I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm actually getting to talk to her in person. So yes, thank you. (laughs) That's great. That's great. Well, will you tell the listeners just a little bit about you and how you got to this point of your journey? Yes, absolutely. So I was an executive in fashion and beauty for over 20 years and, um, and it was great. I was completely happy. It was a great job and all of that. Um, and then one of my coworkers who had just had her second baby and the babies were kind of back to back pretty close and her husband had just asked her for a divorce and she and I, I know like two big things, right. You know, back to back. And, um, we were out of town at a business meeting and you could tell she just wasn't herself. And she said, you know, I just, my body doesn't feel right. Like, I don't even recognize who I am anymore. I'm, you know, just, you know, on and on. And knowing her and how confident and dynamic and brilliant she is, and, you know, used to feel that way to see the, to see the difference was heartbreaking. So she said to me, you always look great. You always put like these fun things together. Would you mind helping me? And I was like, oh my gosh, are you kidding? That would be the most fun thing ever. So, um, she actually became my very first client. And, um, and then it was, we probably worked together for, I'm going to say like maybe four to six weeks. And then her like non-work friends started to notice a difference and were like, you look amazing. You look great. You feel like you look like you feel so much better. And she goes, do you mind, Angela, if I give them your name and number? And I'm like, no, not at all. I would love to help. I would love to. And so it kind of just snowballed from there. So, yeah. Mm, I love it. And I love that story that you can help women feel more confident, more beautiful. I think there's a lot of truth to when we look good, we feel better. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I mean, you could say the reverse too, when we feel good, we look better, but I really believe that when we put effort into ourselves and I'm going to link another episode of the show too, where I interviewed Lily Yang, who was a former client, former client of mine, but she is in the beauty industry. She makes her own um, beauty products and they're phenomenal, like anti-aging products, products and stuff. But anyway, she talked about this, about how, when we put that effort into ourselves and we take a little bit of discipline to care for ourselves and present ourselves in the way we want to be, um, perceived. And then I think that helps people. It helps people notice that we care that we're in for, that like we we mean it. We're here to yes. take up space because we know that 
we're important and we deserve to have that respect that has brought us to this point in our career or our journey. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I know. And, and beautifully said, you know, confidence and appearance and image and all of that, it's weird because, or different or from the standpoint that it's both very internal and very external because when we put that effort in and we feel like we've really nailed our brand image or we really have the perfect outfit on for the situation, people, other people pick up on that and then reflect it back to us, which just feeds the confidence bubble to grow and grow and grow. So, I mean, it is very cyclical in that and it's incredibly important. You think about like, if you've ever run to the grocery store and had like the scrungiest outfit on. And of course, that's the time that you run into somebody that you know, or you know somebody you really admire. And you're like, yes. oh my gosh, I'm like not looking and I'm going to duck behind the end cap so that no one sees me. You, you know, you feel like how that makes you feel versus if you'd had something just, you know, cute on and been like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited to see you or whatever. Right. Just so it, it affects so many things, but yeah. Yeah, I really believe it does. And that is so funny about the grocery store because it happens to me all the time. I'll be like, have, you know, squeezing this moment in to run in the store. And I see people that, oh, I haven't seen in 10 years since the boys right. played travel across, you know, and it's like, yes. oh, why now? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yesterday, I was really cute. You should have seen me yesterday. I was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh, I love it. Okay, so let's talk about this because I think that yes. no matter what our body shape mm-hmm. size is and i know mm-hmm. you focus more on petite style which mm-hmm. i don't fit into at all because i'm five seven and a half but <laughs> so i'm on the taller side i need the the tall sizes but yeah. um anyway let's let's talk about how like no matter what your body shape style or shape size is you mm-hmm. can put clothes on you can style yourself to look good and improve your confidence so I would love to have you talk about that a little bit and how how just having the right style can really improve our own confidence, but then that ups the perception that other people have of us. I think when we present ourselves as confident and we own the space we're in, people respect us more. They take us more serious. And so let's talk about that a little bit. I I love that. So yes, it's So let me just step back just a little bit. So after my very first client, eventually I created this five-step style system and I take clients through it. And the very first thing that we talk about is body shape because it really all starts with that. Once a woman knows the styles and the silhouettes that flatter the shape that she has today, not she won't always have that shape, but the shape that she has today, that how it makes everything so much easier whether it's going into your closet and picking out separates and putting an outfit together, or it's, you know, going to the mall and looking for a last minute outfit for a presentation for the next day, everything is so much better. It makes closet purging. I know you had Kristen on. um, It makes closet purging easier because you know what to keep and you know what to get rid of because you know what, the style just does not work on the body shape I have today. And in regard, like once you know that it makes everything easier Every, everything so much easier. The other thing though, too, is that, you know, so many times as our body shape changes and as women, it will, you know, we, you know, go through puberty and then we get pregnant and then we have a baby and then we take the baby off, weight off or we don't, you know, and then we, and all of that it's, and then there's menopause and then there's a thousand other things. And, you know, it just, it's always changing. So stopping ourselves from judging the body shape that we have today It's the body that we have today and I know how to dress for it. And it just is such a mentally freeing and powerful feeling when you know that the outfit that you put on is going to flatter your body. It's just, and and to your point, whether it's talking to a potential client or just being visible or, you know, whatever, whatever the job um, requires or the, you know, your company requires of you, it just makes everything, um, just freeing. So you can really focus on making a difference and impacting others. Yeah. I love that. So let's talk about that for a second, because I think there Mm -hmm. is, I see women a lot and this, this is not coming from a a place of judgment, but Mm -hmm. I notice how Mm -hmm. they dress because I, Mm -hmm. I like 
fashion. I mean, I like style. I, I love to, you know, look at outfits and all that good stuff. And mm-hmm. from back when I was a branding photographer and a headshot photographer, that was part of the consultation, you know, was really yes. helping people wear the clothes that looked best for yes. their shoots so that they were representing themselves professionally yes. and, you know, pleasing to, to the eye, so to speak. Yes. So yes. let's talk about that a little bit. So we have mm-hmm. multiple shapes. People have different shapes and sizes. And this is going to be a little bit of a challenge, I guess, because we're, we're you know, for the people listening on YouTube, you may see us moving our hands. But um, <laughs> just imagine, I guess, as we're talking, as Angela's talking mm-hmm. about the, you know, the different shapes and the different styles that you could put together mm-hmm. for that. Mm-hmm. Yep. So first things first, if you Google how to dress for your body shape, a bajillion, literally, articles will come up. And 99% of them put women into a category of, I'm an apple, I'm an orange, I'm a pear, or whatever, whatever fruit salad. Um, Or they'll do a geometry thing, like, oh, I'm a circle, or I'm a triangle, or I'm a square. And I bought into that for a little bit. And then it wasn't very long, as I was coaching women, that you notice that they say, "Um, I'm an apple, shape, body shape, and my boobs are too big and my shoulders are too broad. It was always, uh, this is what I am, geometry, fruit, whatever, and this is what's wrong with it, and this is why it's a struggle for me and all of that. And I thought, you know, there is just not a woman on the planet who can go through all that mind chatter in the morning when she's getting dressed, like, oh, if only my shoulders weren't so broad, or if only my boobs were smaller, or my hips were more narrow, whatever. And then walk out of the house and feel amazing about not only herself, but her day, what she needs to accomplish, what she wants to accomplish and all of that. So and when I take my clients through it, we don't talk fruit salad. We don't talk geometry. That is a not like that's not how we talk about our bodies. So what you want to do first is pick your favorite feature. And it doesn't matter what it is. It can be your legs. It can be your decollete. It can be your boobs. It can be your waist. It doesn't matter what it is. The very first thing that we do is come up with styles that fit your brand, fit your personal style or what you want it to be. Come up with ways of accentuating the heck out of your favorite feature. And then so in the morning when you get dressed, instead of saying, you know, like, what's wrong with my body? You're like, oh, my gosh, do my legs look great or what? And you walk out of the door with such a much different perspective. And it's it's so easy to do when we and and clients have so much fun. Like, that's the very first thing that we do is we pick out your favorite feature and then we determine how you how what works with your lifestyle and how we're going to accentuate it. And it's just such a fun and freeing and to your point, confident building exercise. And then that's what we do first. The first thing we do in the morning is we accentuate our favorite feature and then we deal with everything else. And then all of a sudden camouflaging areas that you're not crazy about, or, you know, maybe um, de-emphasizing something that's going on. It's just not that big a deal because your legs look really good. Mm -hmm. So I love that. (laughs) Good. <laughs> I, I love that. And there's so many people who struggle with body image oh. and who have had eating disorders or, you know, different, different trauma around their bodies that I think it is very important to focus on what they like. I love that perspective instead of, mm-hmm. yeah, I've got broad shoulders or, you know, I was always told I'm, oh, you're not fat. You're just big boned. And I mean, I was oh. never never fat. I was a little chubby as a kid, but I was never fat. But I mean, that does a number on you when you're just, you know, like, Oh, well, so I am big. Well, that doesn't make anybody feel good. No, no, Robin, Robin, you would be shocked. And I mean, the majority of my clients are between like 35 and 55. You would be shocked to hear how many stories I hear about, oh, my brother used to pick on me about this, or, you know, my dad would say this, you know, to your point, big boned or whatever. And you know that they don't mean it, but it has made such, I mean, it's like burned into her brain that, you know, this is, this is the situation. So not only has that made me really aware of how we talk to ourselves and to each other and, and all of that, but it really um, does make you think about like, you know, your family, they were, they were trying to be supportive and what they just didn't know how to do it. You know what I mean? So trying to undo that, um, undo that negative mind chatter and reframe it to what's awesome. So, yeah. Mm, I love that so much. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so if you are like 
I don't know how to phrase it the right way, but maybe like, sure. You know, I, I don't want to use the fruit or the other right. or the <laughs> geometry, but maybe if you're, top, oh, no, I didn't mean to scare you. <laughs> if your top is a little bigger than your bottom, you know, sure. like how do you, or, you know, vice versa, how do you style those different yes. body types? Like, what do we look for? Do we look for V-necks? Do we look for, you know, like in photography, I was always like, don't wear a turtleneck because we need yes. to lengthen, you know, like for the mm -hmm. headshots and all those kinds yes. of things. And of course I have a turtleneck on today because it was 27 degrees this morning, but um, <laughs> let's talk no, about agree. like how, how we can ex extenuate those, um, no, accentuate. I said the wrong word. Accentuate those parts of us. Absolutely. So, okay. So I love this. And I want to make sure that we hit on two big things that your listeners can do, like starting tomorrow morning when they're getting dressed. So the very first thing is so frequently when women, women's weight shifts around, uh -huh. like maybe I'm a little bit thicker in the middle than I was because of the baby or because of menopause or whatever. The, just the natural default is, and again, to your point, no judgment, but the natural default is to wear baggy, loose, oversized clothes to camouflage it. Unfortunately, it so often backfires on us because what happens is that I always think about, and I don't remember one thing from chemistry in college, not one, except for this thing. My professor said volume plus volume equals more volume. And that's exactly what we're doing to ourselves, right? So when we have some, maybe a little bit of extra in the middle that we're not loving, and then we buy a tunic top that has, you know, like either an A-line or a tent shape or something that's adding more volume to our middle, we've just made ourselves look wider. So while it's a hard like mindset switch, it's imperative that we like get over that whole thing of thinking that, that that's actually camouflaging because it's not. So that's one thing. Second thing is, is that really good style is just all about creating an illusion. It's like makeup. I always use like with new clients, I always say like, have you ever watched a YouTube video where there's this girl and she's like doing contouring and she goes from having no cheekbones to all of a sudden, like she could cut cheese with these cheekbones because they're so sharp and defined and all of that. Same thing with clothes, except, you know, we're using different styles and silhouettes instead of you know, brown sticks. But um, so what you want to do is you just want to create the illusion of balance. So to your example, where you said like broader shoulders or a bigger bust, and then so you have slim hips and, you know, like a perky bum. So that's like your body shape there. Great. So then we want to figure out how we're going to accentuate your favorite feature, what that may be, do that first. Then we want to pick styles that add volume to your bottom. You already have natural volume on top. You don't need to add any more. Where we can add volume and have fun with styles is what we wear on the bottom. So um, wide leg palazzo pants or um, circle skirts or pleated skirts, things that are going to add volume to the bottom. And then that way, when I look at you, you have a balanced body shape and we've accomplished our goal. Does that, mm -hmm. does that help? I love it. No, okay, good. absolutely. I love Did that it. paint the picture? Okay. <laughs> absolutely painted the okay. picture. And then, okay. so if you're the opposite and you're yes. more hourglass where you're kind of tight on top, smaller chest, and then the waist is, you know, comes in, but then you have a big, bigger bottom. I love how you said perky bottom. <laughs> I, I haven't seen that. a perky bottom in a while, but I do remember. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All you have to do is go to the beach in Florida, right? And then you see yes. a lot of little perky bottoms. A anyway, lot of perky bottoms. We yes. we digress, but anyway, yes. I love I love that you said that. So okay, now to this to this body shape. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. So you have a perky bust and delicate shoulders. So much fun, and there's so many styles that you get to wear. So um, you can wear like poof sleeves. You could wear, you know, fr like frill or ruffled necklines, anything that's going to add a little bit of volume on top, think epaulets. Um, you can wear pockets in the front. I'm thinking because, you know, of course it's winter time. So blazers have been like, I've been looking for a lot of blazers for clients lately. So, you know, all of those little details that are going to add some volume up on top. Um, so just so many fun things, and especially lately, because I feel like designers have been doing a lot of poof sleeves, a lot of more balloon sleeves and that type, all of those things that add some, you know, some, some width on top. So there's that. Then you had mentioned waist, and I think that's really important. So for women who just naturally have a balanced body shape, doesn't matter the size, doesn't matter the height, whatever. All it is, is that the shoulder and bust measurement is the same or super similar to the hip and bum measurement. 
so they have a balanced body shape and that's really what we're all trying to create the illusion of that we have too, right? So for them, they just want to keep the balance. So they want to make sure that if they're adding a little bit of volume on top, you add just a smidge of volume on the bottom. What's really important is that there's always some, especially for short girls and there's, you know, 44% of Americans are under five, four. So, yeah. um, so it's a, it's a big thing, but there needs to be some definition around the waistline. It's really important, no matter what your height is, most women don't say, oh, I wish my legs were shorter. Like, you know, cause long legs are what we are. We're all shooting to create that illusion. So when you have that waist definition, that really gives the illusion of elongating your legs, which is such a flattering look. So, yeah. Hmm. And I guess, you know, if you're, if you are a heavy or person, like I'm fortunate because, you know, I've, I've always been relatively just regular sized. Mm -hmm. Um, of course, weight has shifted over the years, especially now that I'm over 50, but, um, and I exercise a lot. So I'm, you know, I'm toned, I'm, I'm in shape, but yes. so I can wear just about anything except for, I do have more of the wider hips, which does make it harder to, to wear certain types of pants mm -hmm. or dresses. But, mm -hmm. um, I guess what I'm saying is there's, there are things that can help us like Spanx or Mm -hmm. alternative brands, uh, sure. to Spanx. Sure. But I think that can help us if we're in that position where we want to accentuate, accentuate, I keep saying that wrong, our waste, we can actually use tools like that as well. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And the other thing too, is, is that when I say accentuate your waist, it doesn't have to be, you know, a lot of times we think it has to be like really bold and daring. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be at all, especially if you're on the smaller side, like a skinny belt, it's all it takes. Do you know what I mean? Just something yeah. so that there's some delineation so that you can see that there's an actual waistline there, right? It doesn't have to be like something, you know, like some four inch wide belt that's like, you know, pressing in our ribs right. and we can't breathe back from the eighties, yeah. but you know, yeah. it doesn't have to yeah. be anything like that. It can be very subtle. So yeah, I like Absolutely. subtle. I think subtle is with yes. anything in life. I think su subtle, being subtle or using subtle things as mm -hmm. well as simplicity makes a world of difference. So yes. what is your perspective on like the high-waisted jeans and pants and pleats? In Cause I know yes. this year the, the pants were all so big and pleated and baggy and bulky and they weighed a ton because there was so much fabric. I didn't like them because I right. felt like they just were like, like it was a tent or something. Yes. But yes. um, what is your perspective on like high waisted pants mm -hmm. and jeans versus mm -hmm. like lower yeah. or mid rise? Oh my gosh, I love this question. I could literally talk about pants for hours. So this is great. If I go on too long, make like tell me to stop. So that's what's what we call a rise. So it's the top of the waistband to the um, crease in your hip. So. The rise is probably the most critical piece when it comes to finding comfortable pants. You know, there's, do you remember? And I think it might've been like the nineties. That's when like the really low, low rise where like the top of the waistband would hit your hip bone. And all of a sudden we all had a muffin top. It didn't matter how much we weighed. It was just like, because that's what low rise pants do. High rise pants it's, it can be problematic. And here's why is because it has a tendency to make your butt look flat and long. Mm -hmm. It also has a tendency, if you have anything in front in the middle, it can really make that look even poofier. So you have to be really cautious about that high waisted mid rise is by far the most universally flattering rise for women across the board. Um, and then you get into, and you didn't ask, but then you get into leg shape and then that really becomes where it's flattering. The rise is where it's comfortable. And then the leg shape itself is where it's going to be flattering to your body shape. So, yeah. Oh, okay. So we elaborate on that then. Yes. Yes. Like, so say, so, say you have a big, say you have a, and I don't want to say like a big butt as in like an ugly butt and I'm not talking Kim Kardashian, but right. like, you know, a woman who like an athletic build, you know, where. Yes. The, yes. the butt is a little bit bigger. What? Yes. So, okay. But, and then let me just like go back to the high-waisted, the most, the body shape that high-waisted 
white high waisted flatters the most is an athletic shape where they don't necessarily have a super defined waist. So that is the one that like my clients like that, I always send them there first and let's take a look and see if it's as good as we think it's going to be. So with leg shape, there's probably, and I'd have to like really think and count, there's probably nine or 12 of them that I could come up with off the top of my head. Wow. So there was a thing, there was a thing about um, skinny jeans being out and how all these um, Gen Zers and millennials, it was like, oh no, skinny jeans are out. That's what my mom wears, whatever. So a couple things on that. The first one is, is once you know the styles that flatter your body shape, it's super easy to tell some little 12 year old to keep, you know, like mind your own business. I don't care what <laughs> pants you think I should wear because these look great on me. So that's the first thing. And, and it also helps too, because it's so easy to walk away from trends. Like you see something in Bloomingdale's and you're like, oh, if I was six feet tall, that would look amazing on me, but I'm not. So I'm going to keep walking by. So really, once you know the styles, it, it does help a, a whole, whole lot. Um, but like skinny jeans, for example, that is so flattering on a curvy shape. There is literally nothing more flattering than skinny jeans. So that is one. And it's funny because even my clients are like, yeah, I don't care. I still love them. They still look great on me. I'm going to, you know, so it, it's nice. It's empowering. Um, then we have straight legs and then we have boot cut. So if you have a fuller hip and a fuller bum, boot cut looks amazing on you because again, it goes back to that balance, right? So you have, you know, a little bit more here and then you have a little bit more at the bottom and it really creates a beautiful silhouette. So, and I love boot cut. And to your point, I mean, like the bell bottoms that are coming back, the flared, the flared pants that are coming back this season are way, I mean, like they're very exaggerated. So be cautious with those. The thing is, is that, you know, so many of the super trendy jeans are very long. Just always keep in mind, because a lot of women will think, oh, I'll buy them and then I'll take them to the, you know, to my tailor and have them altered. Have to be cautious because if you take off anything more than, I'm going to say three, four inches, you really mess up the shape of mm -hmm. the style. And then all of a sudden you end up with a pair of pants. I mean, that goes for anything, pants, jacket, whatever, that just is not, it doesn't work. It just hangs yeah. wonky. It looks weird overall. So yes. Does yeah. that help? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I was curious about the the rise, especially. So, and I love, I, I have to say, I love boot cut jeans too. I love them. I do too. Always have. I yeah. And when, uh -huh. when it was like all skinny jeans, because yes. back in the early 2000s, boot cut were like the thing. And then we went all skinny jeans, skinny jeans, skinny jeans for quite a yes. while, which I love yes. like to be able to tuck in boots or wear with little booties, whatever. But I love the, I love boot cut. Okay. So yes. now let's talk about neckline, like yes, yes. E neck versus scoop versus square, like all of that. Like, what are your recommendations for that? Like if you're smaller, obviously you said the the puffier sleeves we can get by with. And yes. remember in the eighties, the shoulder pads. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> I mean, they were as big as your head. I mean, if you, if you go back and watch like a dynasty or a Dallas, you're like, oh my gosh, those girls could play football. It was the funniest thing. I mean, we laugh now. I thought it was fabulous back then, but yes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, well, I love that you asked this because you had mentioned it when you were talking about photo shoots. And that is one tip I definitely want your listeners to walk away with is that when you're preparing your outfit lineup for a headshot or for a photo shoot, really make sure that you try on every outfit in front of the mirror and take a mirror selfie because it's going to give you such a much better example of how that outfit is going to translate during your photo shoot than if you just look at it with the naked eye. And um, that is one piece of where you can really, you can think, well, I thought this outfit looked cute. I wear it all the time. I thought, you know, whatever. And then you see the picture and you're like, oh, wow, this needs a little bit of tweaking. And so often, especially with headshots, the neckline is super important. So I completely agree with you. I will rarely like uh, let my clients take a, any kind of pictures with a turtleneck, especially because they just need that openness, that mm -hmm. airiness, that it gives you that feeling like they can breathe. So if your bust is your favorite feature and that's what we want to accentuate, then we definitely want to do like a wrap style or a V-neck or anything that's just going to give you a little bit of openness, right? Um, there's a bajillion different necklines. So while like, so after you get that, I want a little bit of airiness up here so I can actually, you know, create the illusion of more length after that, then it becomes a situation of 
what are you wearing with it? So for I like I love a boat neck. I think that's just the most charming. There's not it's not super popular this season, but I always think it's just a charming and very flattering, you know, look. You want to make sure that you're not, you know, you, it doesn't look like you have like a, a muumu on and you're like covered from head to toe in fabric. So with a situation like that where you have a little bit higher neckline, make sure there's, you know, maybe shorter sleeves just to add a little bit of like, oh, there actually is a body underneath there. Because we can look really covered up sometimes, especially during the winter time. Did that help? Yeah, that does help. Okay. I think I think those are great tips for people to take away. Absolutely. Good. Good. Okay. Yeah. Good. And then of course you have colors. And I think if you are doing a photo shoot, when you know, if you want to be on brand and feel confident using your photos on your website, your social media feeds, whatever, then wearing colors that are, and you don't have to wear your exact brand color. But you mm -hmm. want to accept the brand colors at least, like have it have it blend a little bit or or flow. If, you, if your colors are very muted, you don't want to wear like red for your photo shoot. Now, red is a power color, so there are times and places, like maybe for a headshot, if you're in corporate or whatever, that you would want to wear that, or if it is your brand color. But right. talk talk to us a little bit about that too. I love that. So. I have a program for entrepreneurs and exec that's um, dress your brand. And we often do things like this is our outfit lineup for the photo shoot. And the majority of women that I work with come to me and they say, these are my brand colors, blue and yellow. And that is terrific. And it is a great place to start because to your point, we either want the props that we have in the photo shoot, or we want some sort of a, a pop of that color. So that is in incredibly important. So we definitely start there, but sometimes that's where people stop. And that's where it all of a sudden, like we get the photos back and we're like, oh, they're okay, but type of thing. So with my branding clients, they either, we go through their branding book that they got from their branding person, or we come up with three words to create their brand thesaurus. So just like picture this, say you have two women and they're both dressed in all black and they're identical. And one of them has a black sleek pencil skirt on a black blazer, and then some sort of like black blouse underneath. The other woman has on black skinny jeans, black moto boots, and a black leather jacket. They both have the same color on, say that those are their brand colors, but they're both the out, both outfits are sending a very different message about who that woman is, what her company does, what she's all about and everything else. And there's, I always talk about the 7-Eleven rule, but people make strangers make 11 decisions about you in seven seconds. Mm -hmm. So, you know, sometimes you don't even have a chance to introduce yourself. So they've already decided just by how you look, whether they like you, whether they think you're worth hiring and all of that. So it goes beyond just the colors into the, how do we translate your brand words into an actual consistent style that I, I say uniform, but not in a boring way, but a uniform that is becomes so recognizable as Robin Graham that every time I see you, I'm like, I know exactly who that is. I know what she does and I know who to refer her to. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I love that. And that's exactly what we used to focus on in my shoots too. And, and that's the thing, your clothes don't have to be the end all be all when it comes to a shoot. That's what you use props for or different accents. Mm -hmm. And we can bring those in and in, in subtle ways that yet we're still representative of who you are. But I think mm -hmm. we've come full circle in now we know how to select our clothes. And I love something we didn't touch on, but I, I will link another episode that we had with Jeannie Ryan, where she talked about like the necessities that you need in your closet that, you know, and then you can mix and match. You don't have to, you know, buy multiple pieces at one time. So I'll link that in the show notes as well. Yes. But, um, I, I love that we talked about how to select the clothes for our bodies mm -hmm. that are going to feel good, look good, and then boost our confidence. And then we talked about how, if you are a personal brand, which every single business owner is a personal brand. And even yes. if you are in corporate, you have a personal brand. Like you yes. have to represent yourself how yes. you want people to perceive you. And you get to control that by how you differentiate yourself, how you present yourself visually, as well as verbally, all of those things. So I think we've come full circle back to when you look good, you feel good, you're more yes. confident, and you do control that perception that other people have of you. 
Yes, absolutely. And such, I'm glad you brought that up because we spend so much time talking about, you know, entrepreneurs and business owners and things like that. And women in corporate are apps. They absolutely have a brand. And so many times they don't, they don't think about it and all of that. But especially if you're in leadership, I have a client and she's the head of marketing for a huge company. And um, when she got promoted is when she hired me and she's like, okay, I have to, you know, have photo shoot, like a photo shoot and blah, blah, blah. And all of that. And I said, so talk to me about your brand and like, tell me more about it and all of that. And she's like, wow, I never thought I had a brand before. I'm like, you a hundred percent do. And it's so incredibly important because I'm sure that you were not the only employee who wanted to be the head of marketing. Right. So yes, absolutely. I'm glad that you brought up the corporate piece because that's critical. Yeah, mm -hmm. it absolutely is. And, mm -hmm. and again, those, those colors come into play in corporate too, because if you are always wearing like red and black, you, you appear to be more controlling, domineering, fierce versus if you throw in, you know, some pink or blues or, yes. you know, it, they, colors have psych, such psychology. So such even psych choosing your personal brand assets and what you want mm -hmm. your brand to look like that you have mm -hmm. to think of the color, color psychology, yes. but we have episodes on that too. So we won't dive into that <laughs> um, today, but Angela, will you please tell the listeners where they can connect with you, learn more from you and even work with you? Absolutely. So I have a special gift and I'm super excited about it. And it's funny that we ended up talk, talking about body shape today because that's what it is. It's a body shape quiz. Mm -hmm. So they get a few questions and then afterwards they get a, a video from me about, you know, the styles and the shapes that work best on them. So yes, I hope they stop by. Um, they can go to AngelaFoster.co forward slash Robin, R-O-B-Y-N. Okay. and land right there. And then of course I would love, I mean, love LinkedIn. So anybody who wants to connect with me over there is perfect. That's awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Gosh. Listeners, if you know anyone who is struggling with what to wear or that person who stands in their closet and is like, I have nothing to wear. You have things to wear. They just don't feel good. They're just not the right things if you're saying right. that, right? And yes. I have been guilty of that in the past as well. So you really do have to um, focus on what looks good, but what makes you feel good. It, it takes both to feel confident. And um, it's something that if you are on camera or doing presentations, you have to pay attention to that. So if you know anyone, please share this episode with them because I think they'll find it helpful as well. And then if you would be so kind to leave a rating and review, I would be forever grateful because that does help me get more incredible guests just like Angela. So go follow her on LinkedIn, check her out and be sure and download that quiz because who knows, it may just transition everything. You make it to go on a big shopping trip. <laughs> Robin, thank you so much for having me. Yes, absolutely.